the growth of the global space sector is skyrocketing, and that's creating exceptional opportunities for the Canadian space sector. I think that space can contribute tremendously to the economy of our country by creating jobs for the future and pushing the boundaries of science for the betterment of Canadians and people around the world. It's an important day for the Canadian space program. It's a day to celebrate. I'd now invite the minister to speak. Merci, Lisa, Thank and bonjour you, Lisa. à tous. Hello, Je suis honoré I de me joindre à vous pour les annoncements historiques d'aujourd'hui. Historic uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Lisa, and good morning, everyone. I'm honored to join you today for this historic announcement. Uh, and this is actually my first official announcement with the new CSA president. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Minister. So Canada, ladies and gentlemen, has a long and proud history in space exploration. The first Canada arm was a fixture of space shuttle missions between 1981 and 2011. And we helped build the International Space Station, which has been a permanent outpost for humans for the past 20 years. And the Canada arm two and Dexter are still critical to the daily operations of this amazing laboratory orbiting the earth. Today, we are preparing to help build a new outpost orbiting the moon. This new outpost will be a thousand times farther from Earth than the International Space Station. The Lunar Gateway is the next big international collaboration in human space exploration. So today, we are preparing to help build a new outpost which will orbit the moon. This new outpost will be a thousand times farther from the Earth than the International Space Station. And the Lunar Gateway is the next big international collaboration in human space exploration. It will provide a living space for astronauts, research laboratories, and a mission control for future human exploration of the moon. And one day beyond. It's going to be one of the most ambitious projects humanity has ever undaken. C'est pourquoi je suis ici aujourd'hui pour annoncer fièrement que l'Agence spatiale canadienne et la NASA ont signé le traité Gateway, un accord historique qui garantit le rôle du Canada dans cet ambitieux projet. That's why I'm here today to proudly announce the Canadian Space Agency and NASA have signed the Gateway Treaty, a historic agreement that secures Canada's role in the ambitious project. Unlike the International Space Station, the Gateway will not have a crew of astronauts living and working on board continuously. Instead, our state-of-the-art smart robotic system, Canada Arm 3, will use artificial intelligence to maintain operations in space when humans are not present. And the Gateway Treaty confirms our contribution of Canada Arm 3 and ensures that all robotic operations will be controlled on the ground right here in Canada for the first time. I'm so proud that Canadians are pioneering this cutting edge technology. And our space sector is made up of a diverse and dedicated workforce ready to solve space, space's unique challenges from scientists and engineers to technicians and computer programmers. We have the talent and expertise right here in Canada and we are global leaders in the industry. Indeed, just last week, the Canadian Space Agency awarded a contract to Brampton-based MDA to establish the technical requirements to build Canada Arm 3. MDA is one of the world leading robotics companies known for its excellence and reliability. And this contract with MDA is just the beginning. The agreement we're announcing today will help grow innovative companies of all sizes across the country and position them to succeed in the global space economy, a fast growing market projected to triple in size in the next decade. 
Our investment in Canada RM3 alone is expected to contribute $135 million annually to Canada's GDP, gross domestic product, and create and maintain 1,300 good, well-paying jobs over the next 10 years. But when it comes to Canadian space exploration, we're not only providing next generation robots, we have also an astronaut core operating at world-class levels. So just as Canada was the first partner to officially join the Gateway program, I am proud to announce another first. Le Canada se joindra aux États-Unis pour la Canada première mission avec équipage sur la lune depuis les missions Apollo. The Apollo missions. Canada will join the U.S. on the first crewed mission to the moon since the Apollo missions. Launching in 2023, a Canadian Space Agency astronaut will be part of Artemis II, the first mission to carry humans to lunar orbit in over 50 years. This will make Canada only the second country after the US to have an astronaut in deep space. Et d'envoyer le premier Canadien autour de la Lune. The and first send the first Canadian, Canadian will be sent around the moon. Le traité confirme également un deuxième vol and there will also be un a second Canadian flight later la station for a Canadian Gateway. astronaut to the Lunar Gateway. The treaty also confirms a second later flight for a Canadian astronaut to the Lunar Gateway. Our work in space is a key example of our Canadian spirit in action, our desire to understand, to learn, and to contribute. Canada has led science and health-related experiments on the International Space Station to advance our understanding of the aging process, improve our approach to chronic care and rehabilitation, and perfect medical technologies inspired by space robots. This research has given rise to discoveries that benefit Canadians and people around the world. And Canada's participation on the Gateway and Artemis II will allow us to continue our tradition of being world leaders in space exploration. It's exciting, it's historic, and it gives us hope for the future in these challenging times. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Minister. Our astronauts are with us today, so let's take that opportunity to ask them a few questions. partner astronauts are training. How are your colleagues reacting to this news about our return to the moon? Hi, good morning. Yeah, there's, uh, I mean, there's definitely a lot of work to be done by all of us in developing the technologies and the architectures for these missions. I think that the reaction to that has been one of uh, excitement and pride and, and probably inspiration as well. So the, the international core here in Houston is over the moon excited. I'll say that today uh, by the prospect of these missions and by the opportunity for scientific discovery and innovation that they represent. Um, as Canadian astronauts, I think that we're particularly proud to be representing Canada in this context. And we're also proud to have built here at the Canadian Space Agency, uh, our core of highly trained and uh, ready professional astronauts, all of whom are, are ready for these missions and the ones that will follow. Um, and finally, I would say that we're all feeling particularly inspired right now uh, in a way that I hope all Canadians can feel inspired. We're inspired by the Canadian leadership we see in this uh, bold endeavor to go to the moon, and we're inspired by our history. We've always been on the leading edge of space exploration, going back to our first people with Mark Garneau and Roberta Bondar. And it's inspiring for me to look forward and think that uh, that legacy is going to continue in a way that benefits all Canadians by, by taking some of us to the moon and eventually maybe even beyond. Thanks very much, Josh. David, dites-nous comment notre participation au programme Tell de la... Tell us how our participation in the International Space Station program opened uh, the door to this uh, gateway lunar uh, station. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, it, it paved the way 
you know, we have a long history of space exploration with other countries, and that is the basis of our participation in Gateway. During 20 years where the ISS was crewed permanently, we uh, enjoyed unprecedented international cooperation. Each uh, partner uh, contributes their own expertise. As a physician, I'm proud of uh, the fact that Canadian research was always focused on health, not just astronaut health, but human health in general. And I had never noticed to what extent or realized to what extent, you know, our work in this area would help us to develop our expertise in telemedicine. When Minister Baines asked me to, uh, I know he had thought of it when he had asked us uh, in our Canadian space strategy to advance telemedicine, but we nobody had foreseen facing COVID-19 in 2020. So we're working with experts from around the world to develop our expertise in health, our know-how in space, and in, thus improving um, healthcare in outlying areas. I'm delighted to see that we can what we can do with Canadians in this area. We were going to push our expertise even further here on Earth to contribute improvements uh, in the area of health and to generate genuine savings as well. And Canada will use its world-class expertise in this area uh, to explore the, loon, the, the moon and uh, deep space. So I think it's my turn now, uh, Lisa. So I have a question for Jenny. Uh, and I vividly recall when we were together uh, in 2017, yourself, myself, and Josh, uh, when we unveiled you to uh, Canadians as we celebrated Canada Day. Uh, and that was an exciting moment for me. So I'm delighted to be here today to speak to you, Jenny. Uh, and you're an engineer. And as an engineer, uh, we're really excited about the, the research we're going to do. So I wanted to get a sense from you what kind of research will be done uh, on the moon. Absolutely. Well, first of all, it's a, it's a pleasure to be back with you, Mr. Minister Baines. Um, I'm glad that you asked that because the potential for a scientific discovery on the moon with the Lunar Gateway is really exciting and it's new um, and it's varied as well. I mean, it ranges from mapping the lunar surface to enabling higher definition images of space. And the Apollo program was an amazing program that facilitated some incredible science and we learned a lot about our own planet and our own moon. Um, but we were limited in the sites that we could visit. Now what the Lunar Gateway and its orbit is gonna allow us to do is to visit a bunch of different sites on the moon, some of which have liquid uh, or water ice on them. So uh, we understand now that if we can gain some more expertise and learn about the distribution of water ice on the moon, um, we can gain this key insight into the next steps that we need to complete in order to set up sustainable bases on other planetary bodies in our solar system. So that's gonna be really cool to find out. Uh, Canada scientists are also really interested in studying the geological record of the moon and the geological processes that form the moon's surface. Now that give us, gives us hints not only as to how our own moon formed, but also um, lets us know about the composition and characteristics of other terrestrial planets in our solar system. We learn about other moons, icy moons of other planets, and even smaller objects like asteroids. Finally, I'll also say that the moon just provides this incredible test bed for us to test things like new rover technologies. And those become these roaming scientific platforms that we can deploy on any other rocky planetary surface we might be able to reach. So there is a lot to learn. And this announcement is pretty exciting, as you say, because it means that Canada and Canadians will be there to help facilitate all of that new science. Well, thank you very much, Jenny, for that very thoughtful response. And it's exciting for uh, all the opportunities we have to pursue research in those amazing ways. Um, and I also have a question for Jeremy. Jeremy, when you and I announced Canada's space strategy together in Edmonton, we were both really excited about the opportunities it would create for Canada. And I know you're a passionate explorer and, and that you share my enthusiasm for harnessing space to help Canadians. Uh, and again, on a personal note, wanna thank you for your leadership. You've done tremendous work in advancing our space strategy and being a tremendous ambassador for us. But when you think of these missions to the moon, what benefits do you see for Canada? Yeah, so much there, Minister, and I uh, have to say I'm still very excited about the opportunities that lie ahead for Canada by continuing to leverage space. You know, when I think about Artemis II, this mission is 
It's similar to the Apollo 8 mission in 1968. This is when humans left their new, their new spacecraft. But as, as they came around the backside of the, that famous photo, that photo of the entire globe hanging in the blackness of space. And we saw our entire planet for the first time, its beauty, its fragility. Uh, we were reminded that we're all in this together. And this is what excites me about this is this time when we return to the moon, our eyes are fixed back on our planet and the challenges that face us right here on Earth. Setting big goals in space exploration, for example, the International Space Station, that has strengthened our ability to collaborate. And that same collaboration is required as we tackle big global challenges like climate change. And Canada, in my opinion, just has so much to offer the global community. As was highlighted multiple times today, space is changing rapidly. The commercial opportunities are immense. There are even new commercial opportunities now around human exploration and even space robotics. What I, you know, what I would really love to communicate to our Canadian youth minister is that they should know that our future in space is bright. We are leveraging decades of experience and commitment to be major players in this emerging economy. I, I think it is visionary and so important for Canada. Uh, merci, Jeremy, and, and merci pour votre leadership aussi. Thank you, Jeremy, and thanks for your leadership as well. My next question is for Sherry from Manado, who is an MP for Longueuil and also the chair of the Industry Committee. Sherry, what does Canada's commitment to space mean to local businesses and workers who are part of Quebec's aerospace ecosystem? Thank you so much, uh, Minister. As you know, Quebec is a world leader in aerospace. Its industry includes nearly 200 small or large businesses, some 20 research centers and several associations. will foster innovation in areas like artificial intelligence, robotics, science and health, and support the commercialization of innovative ideas from Canadian industry. This will mean great opportunities for our aerospace companies here in Quebec. For example, we recently announced that Quebec-based NGC Aerospace Limited received $840,000 in funding to demonstrate a planetary navigation system similar to the GPS technology used here on Earth. Today's a great day for space exploration, and it's an exciting day for Canada. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Sherry, and thank you for all the work you do to uh, promote the Canadian Space Agency and the work that you do as the chair of the industry committee. Uh, everyone, uh, I just want to conclude by saying this is such an exciting day uh, for Canada. Uh, I love that my girls, Naniki and Kirpa, who are, I think are watching this live, will see a Canadian fly to the moon in the very near future. Uh, David, uh, when this government first made the commitment to take on this challenge, you were on board the space station and it was amazing and inspirational to watch you in space. And now with today's announcement, I think of the Apollo 8 image Jeremy just spoke of, the earth as seen from the moon's orbit. And as a Canadian, that uh, fills me with pride to think that the next time we see our home planet rising up over the edge of the moon, one of you four will be behind the camera. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre, Député Romanado. Thank you so much for that, Minister MP Romanado, and thanks to our astronauts for participating today. Right now, we're going to answer our questions from journalists who are online. The first question that we're going to ask is one that was asked in the chat. It's from Chris Knight, the National Post. Do we know who the Canadian astronaut will be on the Artemis flight? If not, can you say how she, he will be chosen? So, Elisa, do you want to take on this one? I mean, I, mean, I think this one would probably fall under your purview. <laughs> happy to, Minister. I was going to defer to you, but happy to, sir. And I'll ask the astronauts to jump in as well. Uh, Canada is fortunate to have a strong core of highly trained professional astronauts, any one of whom would be an excellent choice. And these decisions are made 
um, with all sorts of specific considerations uh, at a moment in time when we get closer to these flights. What's exciting about today is that we have a Canadian astronaut flying on the Artemis II crewed mission around the moon. I'll invite our astronauts if they'd like to add anything else to what I just said. Any one of you, would you like to add to that? Jeremy, go ahead. I'm sure I can just add, uh, you know, what's exciting for us, we're already integrated in the National Astronaut Corps. We, we all live and work at the Johnson Space Center. And so at, at some point we would assign a crew and that's when we'll find out which Canadian astronaut is gonna be selected. And, but that's really important that we, we assign ourselves as a crew of international astronauts to go take on this big challenge. And also for us in the Corps, um, we're all gonna be working towards uh, achieving this goal on behalf of Canada. It's one of the things that's really important to us as an astronaut corps is that, that we're a team and that we take on these big challenges together. We look out for one another and, uh, and it doesn't turn into a competitive process, but turns into a process of us, of us lifting each other up all the way. So that's what lies ahead. And if I may just very quickly add that NASA has not identified an astronaut either at this moment. Uh, and the planned mission is uh, going to take place in 2023. So we have ample time uh, to follow the process as indicated by yourself, Lisa and Jeremy. And when we're in a position to announce something, I have no doubt that we will definitely share that news with a lot of pride and joy with Canadians. Because uh, as Lisa mentioned, we have four outstanding astronauts. Uh, and it builds on the proud legacy of the fact that we've had nine astronauts uh, Canadian astronauts go to space 17 times. And so we have a long and proud history uh, and we'll make a big deal about it when we uh, select the astronaut. Quite so, Minister. We've got depth and breadth on our team, so we're ready. Merci. La prochaine question vient de Hugo Gigard. Thank you. Next question, Hugo Gigard, a Presse Canadienne. Hugo, over to you. Oui, merci. Euh, je voulais you. simplement euh, préciser certaines choses. Euh, vous avez parlé tantôt là, de, de Canadiens qui, qui seraient en orbite Canadians autour de la Lune. Est-ce qu'on est qu peut préciser là, que il y aura un Can ou des astronautes canadiens qui vont se poser sur la Lune? Est-ce que ça fait partie de, de, de la mission? Et euh, est-ce qu'on on sait aussi s'il si, si va y avoir plus d'un astronaute canadien à bord de cette prochaine mission-là? Uh, mission? Minister, would you like me to start? Yes, if you can continue, that's a very good question. And I think you can explain the operations. Thank you very much. So I'll start and then I'll invite David to uh, add information about Artemis 2. So the goal with Artemis 1 is to test without astronauts. That's going to happen fairly quickly. Then with Artemis 2, and that's where it's guaranteed that one Canadian astronaut will be there with the others. The idea is to test the flight the question of landing on the moon will come later because we have to test the equipment first. Gateway will be in orbit around the moon. David, would you like to add something? Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. For those who want to look at to the Apollo missions as an example, what we can look at Apollo 8, the f and, and another one, it's the first time that an astronaut uh, head, headed to the moon, went around it, and took some pictures of Earth and then came back. So that was a mission to test the equipment and navigation that far from Earth. And then coming back to Earth at very high speeds, that's also important. So it's kind of like a flyby. So we go around the moon a few times and then come back. Thank you very much, David. As well? Sure. And do you want to pose the question in English so that people know it, or do they have it? No, go ahead. Okay. So the answer is uh, that Artemis 1 it will be uncrewed, and that's going to happen very soon, planned for the fall of 2021. And it's really to test the operations, the mission systems, all aspects of the flight before crewing on Artemis II, and that's where, thanks to this treaty, legally binding treaty, we have a Canadian astronaut who will be joining the crew on Artemis II. The goal is a flyby around the moon, 
I think the mission length is uh, approximately 10 days, could be longer. And uh, I'll invite uh, David, Jeremy, Joshua, or Jenny, if you wanted to add more to what I just said. Joshua, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think it's important to remember in answering this question that what, what we're trying to do with NASA is very, very challenging. And, and there's a lot of technical difficulty and challenges and a lot of risk. And so, you know, where Artemis II fits into that, in my background, flight tests, we would often talk of a build-up approach. And I think that that's um, what's at play here. So as uh, David was saying, you know, Artemis I um, is sort of taking the spaceship out for the first time without crew on it and proving to ourselves that, that what we think it can do, it can actually do, taking it on a profile around the moon. In Artemis II, we sort of go to the next level where we put crew on that, um, but it's still very much in the sense and the, the, the objectives of proving out the systems, proving out the mission, mission concept and architectures to make sure that we can safely get uh, human beings that far and then back. Um, it's worth pointing out here that this will be, I think, the farthest uh, and fastest that any human in the history of our species has ever gone. Uh, and so it's a very big deal to be able to do just that, get a vehicle that far away and then safely recover it uh, back to Earth. I think it's going to be going Mach 32 uh, when it gets back to Earth, which is uh, just you know, scientific speak for really, really, really fast. It's a big challenge. We have to start small. And then with Artemis three and four and subsequent missions, we get into the more uh, additional objectives of actually uh, building gateway and eventually getting to the surface. Thanks very much, Joshua. Thank you. Uh, so we have a next question from the chat from Ivan Sminiak of the Globe and Mail. Along the same lines, but he also adds, will, it, um, will there be an opportunity for Canadian-led science experiments as part of the mission? That's a great question, and I'll turn to you, Jenny, in a moment. Uh, so yes, one of the wonderful things about this treaty is that it does guarantee commercial and science opportunities for Canada. And these will be decided upon as part of the partnership. So if, if you've had a chance to look at some of the news around this, Gateway is uh, led by the United States with the International Space Station Partners, ESA, JAXA, Canadian Space Agency, and NASA. And we will be deciding together and sharing all of that science. So it's gonna be hugely beneficial uh, for Canada. Jenny, do you wanna add anything on that? I think you said pretty much it all, Lisa, but I will um, just add that uh, Canada will have this opportunity to contribute scientifically to these missions. We don't know what, um, what science experiments exactly we're going to be doing yet, but we do have a lot of interest from Canadian researchers and Canadian planetary scientists in a lot of the fields that I mentioned. So looking at uh, everything from uh, mapping the lunar surface to uh, Earth observation, looking back at our own planet, we're interested in a lot of medical applications and Gateway will be able to facilitate all of that research. And again, the really wonderful thing about an international partnership like this and what we've learned from the last 20 years on the ISS is that a lot of this information is shared between nations and it's very much a collaborative effort. So it's wonderful Canada gets to be a part of that. It's part of the most exciting, uh, the most exciting thing about this new venture. It's gonna be wonderful. Thanks very much, Jenny. I don't know, Minister or uh, Deputy Ramanad, if you wanted to add anything about LEAP. Because... Uh, Minister, Monsieur Minister Baines or Madame la Députée? Est-ce que vous vouliez ajouter quelque chose Après 150 ans, nous nous positionnons pour cela. Non, je, je cède la parole à Sherry. Euh, elle en parlait euh, non seulement le Canada Arm 3 et le fait que cela allait contribuer plus de 100 millions de dollars euh, annuellement et assurer 1300 emplois, mais ça va renforcer notre écosystème de PME dans le secteur. Thank you so much, Minister. And I, I, I probably uh, it mirror exactly what you've said. So the importance of um, research in at the LEAP program and the importance of commercialization and, as you said, the ecosystem. So not only um, um, direct suppliers, but indirect uh, suppliers that will be impacted through this. Uh, it's very exciting. I, I know on the South Shore here of Montreal, um, it's going to be a, a big, big uh, project. And I know that everyone is super excited about today's announcement. Thank you very much, Minister and Deputy Ramanoda. I'll just add that hundreds of Canadian companies 
developed uh, exciting new innovations as a result of our involvement in the International Space Station. We expect that and more as a result of our involvement in the Gateway. Thank you. The next question, la prochaine question, va venir de La Presse. The next question is from La Presse, Alice girard -Bossé. Good morning. What will be the involvement of Canada in the Gateway Lunar Project? Can, can you specify a bit more, please? Of course. So what will be Canada's specific tasks in the Gateway, per se? Oh, thank you. I, well, I, th I think we've touched on some elements of the answer just now, but uh, I will uh, invite uh, the uh, astronauts to jump in. The scientific and commercial opportunities will be identified among the gateway partners. It will be up to us, the CSA, the European Space Agency, the Japanese Space Agency, and of course, NASA to decide together. We will all together benefit from the scientific discoveries that will follow. It's a very rich uh, project for all partners. We've all judged that uh, the collaborative approach is important for Canada. And the Canadarm3 is $2 billion over 20 years, a huge contribution from Canada with the application of the uh, ITB policy, industrial and technological benefits policy, which will benefit hundreds of Canadian companies and uh, employments, uh, jobs in Canada. Uh, we feel that we will have $135 million in annual income generated, as well as 1,300 highly scientific and technical jobs for Canada stemming from this project. David, did you want to add to this? Sure. I would like to emphasize an important aspect of Canada Arm 3, this uh, robotic arm that Canada will contribute to Gateway. It will physically resemble Canada Arm 2, but the, with one huge difference, it will have a high a degree of artificial intelligence to be able to function autonomously. The Gateway is not like the International Space Station in the sense that m many times it will not be crewed, things will be automated. And that's a very significant Canadian contribution to advance uh, automation and uh, intel uh, artificial intelligence through robotics with Canada on three. Thank you for that. We'll go to the next question from Mark Boucher of SpaceQ. Am I unmuted? Okay. Yes. This is good. for Jeremy. Uh, you were selected in the 2009 astronaut class, and in your 11 years, you've worked in a variety of roles, including supervising a NASA astronaut class. When you were selected, do you think you would have an opportunity to go to the moon? Well, Mark, uh, has it really been 11 years? Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, <laughs> It, uh, if I think back, did I ever think I'd have the opportunity to go to the moon? Um, yeah, in fact, um, you know, both David and I, when we were selected, we were very much talking about going back to the moon at that time, um, or NASA was. We didn't know what role Canada would play, but then NASA shifted their focus for a while. And, uh, but I, I've always believed uh, in, in Canada, in our space program. I think we've achieved amazing things. I honestly feel like we're just getting started. I feel like the future is so, so bright. So many amazing challenges ahead. Um, you know, it's not gonna be just like our own lives. It's not gonna be easy. There's gonna be uh, ups and downs as we go, but I do feel like there's tremendous opportunity. I'm pretty excited that Canada uh, has had the vision and the leadership to commit to doing something that we do so very well, space robotics, to take it into its next evolution. Like David was saying, it's this is not. It'll look very similar, but this is this is a significant leap in technology. It has a lot of trickle down effects with respect to artificial intelligence. And for the first time in history, we now see a commercial need for space robotics. That's never happened before. We see this technology starting to be commercialized, and I think that opens tremendous opportunity for Canada. We 
it was highlighted in the announcement today, but it's maybe not obvious to a lot of people. Right now, we do control Canada Arm 2 from Canada, but we also control it from Mission Control and at NASA. But there's something very, very neat about this announcement. We will, Canada will be responsible for all robotics, space robotics done in the gateway. That means those jobs would be here in Canada. Those decisions will be made here in Canada. And uh, that bodes really well for Canada in this evolving market space of, of leveraging space robotics. So I'm excited that a Canadian will be on Artemis too, but what I'm telling you about with all these other opportunities is that we are paving the way to, to Canadians doing even more things in space. Eventually, hopefully one day, a Canadian on the moon and on Mars. Those are our goals. And uh, we believe in the trickle down effects from them. Uh, if I may very quickly, uh, because we're talking about Jeremy, uh, he's being very humble, uh, but I do want to underscore the fact that when we unveiled our space strategy and talked about the Lunar Gateway Initiative, Jeremy played a critical role in that. Uh, his understanding of space, but understanding of public policy, his engagement with myself and my cabinet colleagues and, and the prime minister, uh, and engaging Canadians and motivating young people and being inspired by space, so I just want to say, as you've heard from Jeremy, um, there's many different aspects to this space uh, mission um, when it comes to Artemis II. And we talked about the robotics and AI and all the technology and commercial benefits. But this is all because uh, of strong leadership. And I, I, again, want to underscore how thankful I am to Jeremy in particular for stepping up and supporting us and developing that space strategy. He deserves a lot of credit. Uh, you're too you're too kind, Minister. But it, as you know, and I appreciate that. But as you know, it's a huge team of people that makes these things happen. I see them working for you, and I and uh, and I see uh, this the the quality of people that are inspired by space exploration at the Canadian Space Agency. I, I just feel like I'm standing on the shoulder of giants all the time. But thank you for those those kind words. Thank you. The next question will be from Lee Bertiam from Canadian Press. Thank you. Thanks for uh, talking to us today. I uh, don't want to be a, a Debbie Downer here, but I do have to ask the question. Uh, how much is this uh, agreement and this flyby going to cost Canadians? And what would you say, perhaps minister, but also perhaps the astronauts themselves, to those Canadians who will wonder about uh, you know, why we're spending money on this when we could be spending it on other things such as affordable housing, poverty alleviation, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll start off. Uh, thank you very much for that question, Lee. Uh, it's important to note that we're a spacefaring nation and very proud of our space history. And uh, this investment uh, with regards to the Artemis II program, uh, as well as the overall space strategy is well over $2 billion over the next 24 years. And a central component of that is the Lunar Gateway Initiative. And we can't underscore or underestimate the research and the science that the astronauts spoke about before and the direct application that has to improving the quality of life of Canadians. Uh, we can't underestimate the, the utilization of robotics technology and how that's being deployed in our healthcare system. Uh, as well in other sectors of our economy. So there's enormous science and industrial benefits. Uh, and uh, we, we recognize that we need to continue to make these investments going forward. Uh, and we'll see benefits across the country in different regions uh, for years to come. And this is an investment in Canadians uh, and a better quality of life and inspiring young people to pursue a career in STEM. I think that's something that uh, is also important to note that when we talk about our astronauts, when we talk about our space program, when Jeremy and I were in Edmonton, we were addressing students. Um, I think they were grade five students and they were so excited about what the future uh, presented. Uh, and you know, this year in particular, we've seen how difficult and challenging it's been with COVID-19 and people want hope. Uh, people uh, want to see a, a future full of optimism. And I think that's what our space program also does for, for the next generation. So there's many, many benefits uh, and government's about making choices and, and uh, governing is about making choices. And I'm so proud of the fact that we have made this investment. Uh, and we were the first country to sign on to the Lunar Gateway Initiative. Um, others have followed, uh, the Europeans and the Japanese, but I think this builds on our, on our legacy as a space-faring nation uh, and uh, Canadians can be very proud of that. 
Okay, well, we have time for one more question. Uh, the time is running out, and it will be from Aaron Saltzman from CBC National News. You can hear me. This is for uh, David. Um, as the one person in this panel, I believe, who has already been up to space, can you give us a sense of the wonder of that and what the next astronaut, uh, the next Canadian in space will experience in this next mission? Yes, thanks for the question. So, you know, it was really uh, both moving and kind of, uh, you know, life changing for me to have these views. Uh, we all know from, uh, you know, the space program that this is where we live. We live on this blue marble in the middle of space, but to see it with your own eyes really has a, a profound effect. Uh, to see the human condition, how exposed we are, how fragile, beautiful, unique this oasis that sustains all life is, uh, Spaceship Earth, uh, where we're, uh, that's keeping us alive. Uh, and I think uh, these images of moon exploration have been a source of motivation and dream for so many people for so many decades. Uh, the Canadian who will join the, that mission to fly by the moon and go uh, further than anybody has ever been with these amazing views. I think we'll, uh, we'll come back with emotions and perspective uh, that uh, will be amazing to hear uh, and share. So, you know, specifically, I came back with two kind of profound thoughts. One was the fragility and the uniqueness of our, the condition of the humanity in space and how we just have to take care of our planet. It's not an option. And then the other side, the great comfort and realization that every day we work together in space, nations around the world. It's, it's not just theory. Every day we demonstrate that we can work together, even if sometimes on the ground we disagree. In space, somehow there's like this bridge over the clouds where humans work together relentlessly and accomplish miracles. And this is yet another miracle that's going to be accomplished uh, by the concert of nation. And I'm so proud that Canada is part of this uh, next adventure of exploration that's going to uplift us all and benefit us all uh, uh, you know, in economic terms by creating a whole new industry and thousands of amazing jobs. Merci beaucoup. Uh, si on a pas eu la Thank chance. you very much. If we didn't have an opportunity to answer your questions, please contact uh, Media Relations for the Canadian Space Agency. I um, apologize for that, but please get in touch with us, CSA Media Relations. Lisa, over to you. Ce qui conclut notre événement. This brings our event to a close. Thank you for being with us. Please visit the Canadian Space Agency's website. Follow us on social media for daily space updates. Merci à tous et bonne journée. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day.